welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to do a group test of all of these microSD cards in order to determine the best boot drive for a single board computer such as a Raspberry Pi. So let's go and get started. Right, here we have our seven microSD cards on test but before we look at them individually, let's run through some key SD card specifications. Firstly, as I detailed in my recent SD card video, today SD cards may have one of four different bus interfaces. However, I'm not aware of any consumer SBC with a UHS-2 or UHS-3 interface, so the best micro SD card for SBC right now should therefore be UHS-1. Secondly, the faster the card the better, and here we have a reminder of the different SD card speed classes. However, I don't know of any SBC that can take advantage of the very fastest cards, and so my recommendation for an SBC is to choose a microSD card rated either U1 or U3, which is equivalent to V10 or V30. Thirdly, an SD card's application class also needs to be considered. Here, all cards labelled A1 or A2 are rated for a minimum number of IOPS or input-output operations per second. This matters because an SBC's boot drive must not only be fast, but must also be able to handle lots of small parallel file operations. Today, most SD cards don't have a stated application class, but if possible, get a card rated at least A1. To summarise, in theory the best microSD card for an SBC should have a UHS-1 bus interface, a speed class rating of U1 or U3, and an application class rating of A1 or A2. In most cases, it also needs to be reasonably priced, and with this in mind, let me introduce you to the cards on test, all of which are brand new 32GB UHS-1 microSD cards. Firstly, we have this SanDisk Ultra. The SanDisk Ultra has been my go-to microSD card for SBCs for many years now. It's a well-priced card. It's got a U1 speed class and an A1 application class. However, I'm also going to try this card, which is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. This is a more expensive card. It's rated U3 or V30 for the speed class, an application class again of A1. It'll be interesting to see how this compares with the, the SanDisk Ultra. Next, I've got a card from Samsung. This is the Samsung Evo Select. And it's worth noting that Evo Select is a name for this card on Amazon, whereas if you buy it anywhere else, it's called the Evo Plus. And this is a U1 card. It doesn't have an application class listed, but it is a popular choice. Many people have said to me, please test the Samsung Evo. And it's worth noting that when Nvidia sent me my Jetbot, it came with a Samsung Evo card like this one. So, next we've got a, a Delkin Advantage card. Now, Delkin's got a very good reputation for making a microSD devices. This is a U3 card, no application class stated, but uh, it's an expensive card. In theory, it should do very well. We shall see. Similarly, I've got high expectations for this card from Lexar, the Lexar High Performance. This is a U1 card with an A1 application class rating, so we'll see how this performs. And finally, changing tack somewhat, we have uh, these two cards here. If I can get them up on the screen for you, there they are. Um, here we have the uh, Samsung Pro Endurance, which is a U1 card with no application class stated, and uh, the SanDisk High Endurance, which is a U3 card with no application class stated. And these cards are designed for dash cams with a higher life expectancy than traditional cards, which might make them a very good choice for use as a boot drive in an SBC if you're most concerned about long-term reliability, which is of course something I can't really test in this video. But what I can tell you is that Samsung claim that their Pro Endurance card here lasts 25 times longer than a typical microSD card. And exactly why this is the case is very difficult to definitively explain because you can't get very good data from manufacturers on what's going on here. But I strongly suspect that these two cards are based upon MLC rather than TLC flash storage, 
which means that they store two bits of data per memory cell rather than three bits of data per memory cell, which gives them a lot more program array cycles and therefore gives them the high endurance. And I've been through many manufacturer websites and specifications to try and prove this, but sadly, I, I just can't. The, the only thing I can find to point you to definitively is this Samsung page, which says that their Pro Endurance card's extended lifetime is based on an internal comparison with the Samsung TLC-based cards. And we don't say which cards those are. But what I imagine this tells us is that these high-performance cards are indeed a 2-bit MLC rather than a 3-bit TLC. Anyway, our full list of contenders is now summarized here as in this table. So let's now uh, open the cards up, which will give us this little pile of cards all ready to be tested. And you might be asking yourself, Chris, how are you going to test all these cards? And indeed, I'd be asking myself, how are we going to do all these tests? So what we're going to do is this. Firstly, we're going to benchmark all the cards using Crystal Diskmark. Secondly, we're going to do a Raspbian boot test, booting Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi 4. And finally, we're going to test the cards out in Raspbian itself. Right, I've now plugged a high-speed USB 3 SD card reader into my laptop, and I've inserted the SanDisk Ultra as our first test card. I've also run up Crystal Disk Mark 7, and I've set the profile here to a real-world performance. And clearly, we're going to produce a lot of data running this test on the seven cards, and so I'm going to focus in our results on the first test here, the large file test, which will give us the maximum read-write speeds for the cards, and I'm also going to focus on the IOPS score for random small reads and writes. So, let's uh, test out our first card. And uh, there we are. And let's now repeat the test for the SanDisk Extreme Pro, the Samsung Evo Select, the Delkin Advantage, the Lexar High Performance, the Samsung Pro Endurance, and finally, the SanDisk High Endurance. And with this final test run, let's now compare the results. As we can see, all micro SD cards are not created equal. Working across the table, read speeds are in effect identical within the boundaries of experimental error and probably reflect the limits of the UHS-1 interface or the card reader used. But sequential write speeds vary dramatically, with the SanDisk Extreme Pro in the lead and the Delkin Advantage and SanDisk High Endurance worthy of mention. We also see significant variance in the read and write IOPS values for random small file operations, with the Lexar High Performance winning and the SanDisk Extreme Pro coming in second. So, after this first test, the Lexar is the top card based on IOPS performance and the SanDisk Extreme Pro based on pure speed. And so I think it's now high time to give these cards some real world SBC tests. For our second test, here I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 into which I've inserted our first card, which is the SanDisk Ultra. And what we're going to do is to compare the boot time for all seven cards. So what you're looking at here is a camera pointed at a monitor on which the Pi will boot. I don't normally record a computer by pointing a camera at a screen, but I think it's most suitable in this particular circumstance. So if I now just uh, press the switch, and uh, there they go. I should say this is not the first boot of Raspbian on these cards, it's the third boot after a clean install, after all the configuration has been completed. All the monitors coming to life there, the Raspberries have appeared on the screen. And it uh, looks like it's going to be very even, actually, doesn't it? And uh, which one's going to win? Oh, it's going to be very, very exciting, very close. And uh, oh, there we are. And well, they're pretty similar, aren't they? There's not a lot of variance in the, in the boot times for those first four cards. So let's move to the second three cards and again, press the switch. And uh, there these go as well. I should note you can't see the uh, Raspberry Pi sort of coloured spectrum square on the screen here because my monitor isn't fast enough to, uh, to show it by the time it's picked it up. It's gone if you see what I mean. Anyway, it has no impact on this test whatsoever, but you might have been thinking about that. But uh, I imagine we're going to get fairly similar results again here, very similar scores for the different cards. And uh, there they are, everything's come up and finished off uh, like that. So uh, there we are. And if we put all the results onto a table, 
we can see what we've just seen that basically the choice of SD card makes very, very little difference at all when you're booting a Raspberry Pi 4. If you want to knock off the old second, you can take a Lexar High Performance card or a SanDisk Extreme Pro, but really what all the effort I've put in this particular test has told us is it makes no difference at all which card you use booting a Raspberry Pi 4. So I think we should now move on and do another, hopefully more discriminatory, test. Right, for our third test, I'm here in a Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 4, and we're running from a SanDisk Ultra card. And we're going to test the speed of a card using the new Raspberry Pi speed test software launched by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in March 2020. And to get this, as I did earlier, you need to launch a terminal and type a sudo apt and update. And then when that's completed, you want to do a sudo apt install agnostics. And when that's run through, you can go to your menu and you will find under accessories, Raspberry Pi Diagnostics. And uh, there will be lots of tests here in the future, but for now it's just one test, happens to be the one we want. So we'll run the test and it'll start to run through and it'll give us a result of a pass or fail. But it also allows us to bring up some more detailed results. And uh, there we are, we've got a pass. I would expect that for all the cards on test, but we'll click on a show log and it'll bring up the uh, detailed statistics. And you can see the card has passed based upon targets for its sequential write speed and its write and read IOPS performance. So let's now repeat the test for the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And uh, there we are, a pass again. We'll show the log again though and get some uh, proper results. And uh, there we are, there's the actual data. And now we'll do this for the Samsung Evo before running through to do it for the Delkin Advantage, the Lexar High Performance, the Samsung Pro Endurance, and last but not least, the SanDisk High Endurance. And there we are, our seventh and final set of results. So let's stick them all onto a table and the first thing that strikes me here is how different these results are from our previous Crystal Disk Mark tests. In terms of the individual cards, once again, the raw sequential write speed of the SanDisk Extreme Pro puts it way out in front on this measure, whilst the Lexar card retains its top position for the best IOPS performance. The Delkin Advantage and the SanDisk High Endurance are also again, I think, worthy of a notable mention. So, which is the best microSD card for a single board computer? Well, the SanDisk Extreme Pro has the fastest sustained write speed, which is really useful if you're constantly installing new operating systems. And so, for fast setups, my top microSD card is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. On the other hand, the Lexar High Performance has the highest IOPS values on test, which makes it better for running applications and an SBC's operating system. The Lexar is also pretty fast and cheaper than the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And so for most users, I'd recommend the Lexar High Performance as the overall top microSD card for a single board computer. This point made for the best performance over time, a high endurance card is well worth considering. And in our test, the SanDisk High Endurance has been a consistently good performer. It is more expensive than the Lexar card, but if you want a micro SD card with the best chance of working reliably for a long period of time, you may well want to choose the SanDisk High Endurance, and certainly it is my choice as the top micro SD card in the high endurance category. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoy what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.